Hello everybody, today we are going to be looking at a scenario where Germany has a flashback in 2024. So quick disclaimer here, this scenario is going to be very unrealistic, clearly. I also say this every flashback video. These scenarios are impossible, they're not going to happen. But I am going to be trying to base them off of some realism, off of what the countries would do, or the empires. Also guys, another quick disclaimer, no nukes are going to be used in this scenario, but alliances are going to be kept in. Also, make sure to like and subscribe, do all that cool stuff, join the discord down in the link below in the comments. Also, I thought I would say something real quick. I know my upload schedule is totally just trash, I know. I think it's because I have a lot of anxiety problems, and I have a low self-confidence in my ability to do things, such as speak. Guys, you wouldn't know the amount of times I stutter in these videos. It's the wrong we- ah! It's the one reason it takes me so long to freaking edit, because I gotta cut out all that bullcrap. Also, 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 I've said also a lot of times already. These borders are not going to be 100% accurate because just looking at this Poland border, I guess at first sight it looks okay, but when you really start to look at it, something seems off. Yeah, guys, I drew this from a reference, so anything is off, it's my bad. Same with these African colonies as well as Guinea over here. And yeah, I think I've said everything so far. I'm pretty sure I have. So let's get to the stats of this new German empire. So looking at the German empire here, their total GDP is $4.8 trillion, which is, dang, that's not very good at all. Compared to the amount of land they got, no, that's terrible. Their total land area is 3.1 million square kilometers. Yes, Americans, I'm sorry, I'm using kilometers again. My bad, just gotta have to deal with it. Their total population is 190 million. Their total personnel is 1.9 million. And their military rank right now is fifth. Behind India's, but ahead of South Korea's. And of course, their capital is Berlin. So, looking back at the map here, guys, I'm sitting here right now thinking I'm forgetting something. <clears throat> I should have said this before, but Germany has returned to their old monarchy. All of the German Empire's ideals back in 1914 are going to be returned to the German Empire today. So, yeah, with that being said, let us finally get into this scenario. So, Germany, Germany, Germany. Dang, your borders look clean. But what is the first thing you are going to be doing here? Because you kind of have to be careful. Well, Germany does have to kind of be careful. Because the reputation right now is completely garbage. Their image is terrible. Even Czechia and Austria hate them right now. And basically every single country in the world does. And why is that? Because Germany gaining this much power is giving the world some not so good flashbacks. So nobody really likes Germany right now. And Germany's gonna have to work with that. Because let's say Germany invades, oh I don't know, Liberia. The United States is most definitely going to sanction them and they might even get involved. So yeah, right now, Germany has to build back up its reputation. So anyways, what's the first thing Germany's gonna do, other than what I just explained? Well, they have to do something to try to get their image up, and that something is going to be removing racism from their colonies. Probably the best thing they could do right now. A bunch of anti-racism laws are put into place in Africa, and basically, the people in all these colonies are given the same rights as the people in Germany. But there is another problem, and that's that most of these colonies, most of their populations don't speak German. That's a huge problem. Communication problems. A lot of people do speak German in Cameroon, but, but not as many as you might think. Same goes with Namibia or Tanzania, and Togo, Papua New Guinea. Although I doubt a huge rebellion would break out in these colonies because, well, Tanzania, Cameroon, and Namibia are not strong countries, and Germany could probably easily put them down. If they're ever going to get independence, they'll want it through diplomacy. And well, do they want independence right now? Not really. And Germany's not going to give it to them anyway. German diplomats and other people fly down or sail down to Cameroon and these other colonies. Also, German workers go down there. And Germany's main goal is going to be not only politically stabilizing their country and just stabilizing their country in general, but also building new infrastructure in all these colonies and practically not even making them colonies anymore. Germany's kind of trying to make them into just German overseas territories. The territory that is getting the most effort put into them is going to be Cameroon's colony. And Germany starts building massive road networks, also developing the colony itself and building more schools that have to teach the students German as well as, well, their native language, I guess. Maybe English and German and something else. But German is going to be the one being taught the most. It's also going to be offered to adults for free. And yeah, overall, Germany's doing pretty good modernizing all of these different colonies. It's getting their reputation up. The rest of the world is seeing that Germany is not trying to bring, well, destruction upon all their colonies and also exploit them. They're seeing that Germany's genuinely trying to help them. And we'll skip ahead a few months. In a few months, we can actually see Cameroon, Tanzania, Namibia, and Togo, these regions of the German Empire or colonies, they actually become some of the wealthiest regions in all of Africa. With their GDP per capita being around, I would say 20,000 to 25,000. Now this could take months, it could take years, but I'm going to say it takes maybe close to a year, maybe 10 months, 11 months. But the point is here is that the German colonies are being treated very well. And Germany uses this to boost up their image and get a bit of a cool down on the USA and also Russia. Makes them feel, I guess, less threatened, I would suppose, I would say. So now they can focus on something different 
and that being the military. Germany is going to start building up an absolutely massive navy, and I don't know what this project would be called, but it's called something. I would guess France would become the leading member of the European Union. Germany, they would probably stay out of it. They're going to isolate themselves a little bit for now. Not like anyone likes them in the first place. But yeah, Germany is starting to raise its military, also build up its navy. Germany is going to start trading with some rather large nations, the biggest of which being China and also Russia. It's not a very big surprise that Germany is going to need a lot of oil, and Russia, Russia has oil. Also, Germany and Russia kind of have the same ideals here, or ideas. The German Empire does not want the USA in Europe. I'm going to guess they despise the United States, because, well, the United States is putting itself everywhere. The USA has bases in South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and Oceania. In every single part of the world, the USA has bases. Also, guys, if you're wondering what the main goal of the German Empire was... It's actually really straightforward and simple. Germany literally wanted to become the world superpower. That's their entire main goal here. And the United States is definitely a roadblock. But Russia, Russia hates them. Russia hates the United States. So Germany can see a potential partnership with Russia. But of course, Kaliningrad is a problem. Russia lost that. But just realize they are trading with each other, mostly oil and gas. China and Germany are mostly trading themselves goods. China is definitely also a little hesitant because, well, as you can see here, they also lost some ports and territories, but trading is trading. And overall, Germany is not going to do anything for a while, for at least a few years, because, well, they can't really do anything. Like I said before, sanctions, all that bullcrap. So for now, trading. Also, like all the stuff I said before, I've been talking for like 15 minutes. Y'all clicked off at least 10 minutes ago, but I'm done yapping. Let's skip ahead at least, I would say at least five years. So yes, we skip ahead five years and the German economy is absolutely booming. I would say it's at least around 8 trillion by now. And the German Navy is the strongest in all of Europe, competing with China's and India's, but not yet competing with the United States's. So what do they want to do now? Well, they have ambitions in Africa, but now they have some ambitions they can finally fulfill, because the German Empire thinks that their image is good enough to try to do something. And what is that something? Well, it's declaring war on the Congo, or the Republic of the Congo. Now guys, when I said before that Germany's main goal was to become, well, world superpower, it is, it is, but I forgot to say the other goals. And that other goal is connecting Cameroon to Tanzania. Now historically during the Berlin Conference, they wanted to do this, mostly take over the DRC because, well, resources, the DRC is stacked with them. So ideally, Germany would want something that looks probably like that. And is the USA going to do something about this? They, they could. I don't know if they would though. Because at this point, Germany is a pretty big trading partner. But anyways, done yapping, get to the war. The first thing we can see happening here is German troops crossing across the border and easily pushing through the jungles. They would take this exclave of the Congo and make a landing and take over all of the coast. They push in, and after just a few months of fighting, the Congo's capital is taken and the nation surrenders. But does Germany stop there? No, they do not, because they march straight into Gabon. German troops cross the border, and well, you can expect what happens here, because nobody's going to help out Gabon, sadly. Gabon's a really cool nation, guys. I'm pretty sure Gabon does have a lot of oil, so this could definitely help Germany out in the future. So, Gabon's capital is captured, and the nation surrenders pretty quickly. And now, we can look at a peace treaty. Alright, so looking at the peace treaty here, full annexation. You guys could have probably guessed that. Pretty predictable, because, well, I explained before that Germany wanted to connect all of this. So the next thing we can see Germany doing here is forcefully annexing this piece of car, or the Central African Republic, because that border looks ugly, also because it's in Germany's way. Now, is Germany going to invade the DRC right away? I would guess not, because they have a lot of stuff to assimilate here. They gotta build more roads. Africa is not very developed, in this region specifically. So Germany has to put up a lot of money trying to build infrastructure in Gabon and also the Congo. So, a few months until Germany makes the next move. And their next move is obviously going to be invading the DRC. But as you guys might have also anticipated this, the DRC also also anticipated this. So we can actually see Germany failing to push across the Congo River. As DRC forces were already prepared for this. But they failed to stop the push into this region right here. As Germany captures, I think there's two big cities right here or just one? I don't know. But there is cities right here. Although the campaign over here in the west failed, the one in the east is going decently well. As they land in the south and start to push around inside of the DRC. Eventually, the Germans do break through in the south, but it's not to take the capital, because, well, they failed to do that, they failed to do it again. But they do manage to cut off the DRC right here, in the Angolan border, and eventually take this entire area. Although Germany is getting very close to the DRC's capital, which is, I think, exactly, like, right there. Pretty sure it is. But even though they're getting pretty close, the DRC is defending it very, very well. German forces over here in the south push towards another major city, which I think is right there. Might be a little higher. They also cut off this region next to Zambia, take the entire thing, and continue their large push. 
German forces over here, though, in I think the Mid East region. Yes, the Mid East region. They kind of just stop their push because, well, the interior of this nation is very jungly. So for now, Germany is going to focus in on the west and on the south. German forces eventually encircle the DRC's capital, which leads to the bloodiest battle of the war, but it does turn out in a German victory. But the DRC does not surrender, as they make a surprising move by pushing back the Germans just slightly, at least they did something. German forces eventually push over and capture the city right here, and the DRC is starting to lose a lot of good stuff. All of the DRC south right here is eventually cut off and captured, which is finally going to lead to the surrender of the nation. So looking at the peace treaty here, Germany does not fully annex the DRC. What they do is they turn the DRC into an overlooked dominion, which does have some semi-independent qualities, I guess. And Germany does this to try to assimilate the DRC before they even get annexed. So eventually they are going to get annexed, but for now they're going to remain a dominion. Until Germany, well, sees fit that they can annex all this. But Germany is still not done in Africa. They have a few more goals. And that goal, well, I'll explain it. They send an ultimatum over the Angola, basically demanding this exclave right here. And if they don't let them take it, Angola is going to be invaded. Yeah, I'd accept that deal too. Okay, looking good Germany. But like I said before, not done yet. As we can see German forces invading Sierra Leone, they land on the coast, they take all of the country's coastline, and eventually the country fully collapses, and in the peace treaty, full annexation. In a matter of about a year and a half, Germany has annexed all of this land. Anyways, on to the next thing. Maritime War. Basically, what Germany is trying to do here is expand its maritime border, specifically up here in the Baltic Sea. They are trying to take a lot more maritime border than they probably should, which causes a bit of tension, but Denmark and Sweden really don't want to try anything. Down here in Africa, Germany is also having some maritime problems with France, specifically over here in this region, and also a lot of maritime problems with China, because China likes to claim stuff they don't have. And maybe over here in Papua New Guinea. But you guys get the point. Lots of tensions around the world. So they are going to focus in back on Europe with some diplomacy. We can see Germany creating their own secret service and infiltrating the UK's politics, France's politics, Spain's, Italy's, Poland's, also some other countries. Germany's goals in these rigged elections are going to be simple, I guess. They want a pro-German leader to get elected and also a, also a pro-NATO leavist. Now this does work in some places, and that place being the UK. We can see the United Kingdom electing a new prime minister, that of which being very pro-German and not liking NATO, just like Germany wanted. The one in France fails, the one in Italy also fails, but the one in Spain does work, and they are pro-German. German and British relations are going to build up, to a point where Germany and the UK eventually sign a full-on military pact. And I would guess this would be two years in the future from the African invasions, so maybe eight years into this scenario. I'm trying to give you guys a time perspective here. So hooray, the UK's here now. Alright, now Germany's gonna focus in on Russia, because Russia would definitely be a pretty big ally. So we can see the new German king visiting over to Russia and speaking with, well, whatever Russian leaders in power. And I'm going to say just for the sake of the scenario, he is also very anti-USA and NATO. Germany and Russia enter into some secret talks and talk about the eventual, well, disbanding of NATO. And they make a deal. Basically, Russia is allowed to use German ports, specifically on Kaliningrad's coast or Konigsberg's coast and also some of Poland's coast in exchange for a military alliance. Now Russia here, Russia is going to see this as a good thing. So they go ahead and join military alliance. Now the Russian Ukrainian war is definitely a topic. In this scenario, I'm going to be saying Ukraine manages to push them out and get back to what their border was before 2021 or 2022. After a few months, we can actually see Belarus also joining this alliance. That's because Belarus doesn't like Poland, Germany right now. I, I doubt they'd like Poland very much. Also, they're Russia's best friend, they don't like NATO, so works out. So now, we can get to the next stage of this video, and that being the Middle East. <laughs> Always gotta go here. And this invasion is specifically going to be in Yemen. Why in Yemen? Because of this right here. And looking at the peace treaty. Yep, I feel like Yemen always gets bullied in these videos. But yeah, we can see Germany annexing most of this coastline right here, and putting Yemen's economy in shambles. Alright, but the shenanigans in the Middle East are not done yet as Germany is going to stroll their navy in, but we can actually see the United Nations taking action and pressuring Germany to leave this region. And Germany? Dang, that's an L right there. Hey, at least the DRC just got annexed. Okay, nice. All right, so what's the next thing Germany's gonna do? I've said that a lot of times here.
Thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure to like and subscribe to all that cool stuff. Also join the Discord down in the link below in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Can you see all of me? Walk into my history. Step inside the world for delight.